You're scrolling through your phone, getting ready to drift off to sleep. Suddenly, you feel something moving on the bed next to you. You assume it's your cat, so you ignore it and try to relax. But then, out of nowhere, your own hand lunges at you. It feels like something out of a horror movie, but this is actually happening to you in real life. What could be causing this terrifying phenomenon? Is your hand possessed, or is something more sinister at play? This is the story of a 28-year-old woman whose hand was controlled by an alien brain for 18 long years. Karen Byrne had been suffering from intermittent epileptic seizures for 17 long years. The seizures had started when she was only 10, but had now gotten so close together they were near constant and life disrupting. She decided to undergo a serious brain surgery to get them under control. Operations to cure epilepsy typically entails identifying and cutting out a small portion of the brain that spits out abnormal electrical signals which trigger seizures. A more invasive surgery might be needed if the damaged portion of the brain can't be found. For Karen, surgeons had to cut into her corpus callosum, a small area in the brain that connects the left and right hemispheres. When Karen woke up after the operation, she felt as good as she could following brain surgery. She could sit up, look around the room, and talk to her doctors who came to check on her. The intimidating brain surgery seemed to work, and she wasn't having any seizures. Everything seemed fine. But suddenly, one of her doctors shouted, Karen, what are you doing? As doctors watched, Karen's left hand was slowly moving up her shirt, delicately unhooking each button one by one. Karen, unaware she was undressing herself, was mortified and quickly buttoned it back up with her right. But the moment she stopped, her left hand, like it was possessed, immediately began working on unbuttoning again. Her doctors leapt into action calling other doctors to figure out the situation. Clearly, something that happened during the surgery turned her left hand into an independent creature with a mind of its own. The hand wasn't letting up and started to act angrier, tearing the buttons off the shirt despite a hysterical Karen asking it to stop. Karen's brain was in a war for control as a side effect from her surgery. The cutting of her corpus callosum had fixed her epilepsy, but without this band of nerve fibers, her left and right hemispheres were in constant struggle. One half of the brain had seized control over her left hand, while the other half still maintained her ability to use her right. The medical team had to wrestle her hand down in order to get it under control, while Karen was left in tears. She felt helpless with this new problem. This wasn't just a physical spasm or twitch. Her hand was acting with intent with its own mind. Over the following years, Karen's left hand would, against her will and without her knowledge, sneak into her purse. It would take things out of my handbag, and I wouldn't realize, so I would walk away. I lost a lot of things before I realized what was going on. Karen felt that the left hand wanted her to be more moral, and that for some reason had some animosity towards her. When she was trying to smoke, her left hand would sneak over and snuff the cigarette out. Apart from trying to get her to quit, it also punished Karen when she cursed. So, what was going on? Karen was diagnosed with a rare condition called Alien Hand Syndrome, which is characterized by an inability to control one of your hands as it moves and performs actions independently, without the user's intent or awareness. Just like your own hand is an alien invader. Alien Hand Syndrome was first described in 1908 by German neurologist and psychiatrist Kurt Goldstein. He reported a case of a 57-year-old woman whose left hand appeared to do whatever it wanted. If she didn't keep tabs on her arm, she couldn't be sure what it was doing at any given moment, even complaining that there must be an evil spirit in it. On occasion, her rogue limb even attempted to asphyxiate her, forcing her to use her right hand to fight it off. People who suffer from AHS generally maintain sensation in their rogue hand, and often call their alien limb in third person, since it acts autonomously, with a goal. On occasion, some patients name their rebel hands and may feel strongly that the limbs act as if it doesn't belong to them, but know it's part of their body. 
Since the alien hand continues to move and perform activities with a will of its own, the actions can be completely unnecessary or inappropriate at times, which can be a mortifying experience for those who live with AHS. Sometimes, the alien hand can act like an adversary, like we saw with Karen's case. Your conscious mind may want to do something that the alien hand will oppose, like closing a drawer you've opened, trying to fill your mouth with food, incessantly touching your face when you really don't want to, or hiding something you're looking for. Much like anything neurological, any damage or impairment in the brain can result in numerous side effects elsewhere. The kinds of damage that can trigger AHS include tumors, strokes, aneurysms, traumatic brain injury, neurodegenerative disorders such as Creutzfeldt-Jakob and Parkinson's, and like we saw with Karen Byrne, as a side effect of brain surgery. Though AHS is a very, very rare condition and isn't usually a main concern when a stroke happens. AHS has three main versions that stem from it being caused by different parts of the brain. The frontal lobe version affects the right hand and generally causes grasping other parts of the body, clothes, and objects, as well as having difficulty releasing things. The colossal version involves the corpus callosum area of the brain and causes conflict during two-handed tasks like Karen's button struggle. And lastly, the posterior version, which involves the parietal lobe, can cause the arm waving about and hovering around. However, since the movements in this area are less purposeful, people can struggle psychologically and stop recognizing their hand as their own. Since AHS is so rare and has overlapping symptoms with some psychiatric issues, it can be hard to diagnose. Doctors will have to rule out motor-based dysfunction and psychological issues, which can be invalidating for patients. Medical staff will conduct tests like MRIs and CT scans to find the underlying cause behind one's AHS. So far, a cure for AHS doesn't exist, but researchers are developing treatments to reduce patient symptoms. Individuals who experience AHS because of a particular illness or stroke can have their symptoms improve after treatment for their underlying condition. However, if one's AHS is caused by a neurodegenerative disorder, recovery is often less successful. Treatments include using muscle control therapy, Botox, and other neuromuscular blocking agents like benzodiazepines. However, psychotherapies like mirror box therapy, CBT, visuospatial coaching, exercises that flex your hand-eye coordination, can also manage one's alien hand. Sometimes, individuals find it helpful to give their alien hands verbal commands, but it doesn't typically produce long-term results. While alien hand syndrome might seem scary in some cases, treating the underlying symptom indeed seems to be the best resolution. Dr. Ramon LaGuarda and his colleagues reported on patients with AHS, publishing a study in the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Psychiatry. A 65-year-old man described traveling on the bus, minding his own business, when he saw a hand reaching over to him on the right from behind, as if it were trying to catch him. The hand reached over and grabbed his pant leg and would not let go. First, I thought somebody was assaulting me, but then I realized that it was my own right hand, although I did not feel it belonged to me. This was the man's first incident, but after that day, his right hand was plagued with involuntary creeping movements and repetitive jerking motions. I was unable to control my right hand, and I had to grasp and hold it with my left hand. My right arm felt heavy and awkward. I was very anguished, anxious, and frightened, and had palpitations. The medical team conducted a series of examinations and blood tests for the man, which all came out normal, until they decided to have a CT scan, where they found an atrophy in his left frontal cortex. After prescribing carbamazepine, an anticonvulsant medication, the symptoms finally went away. Another case from the same study described a 54-year-old man having to pull over when driving because his left arm had an uncontrollable tendency to grasp and pull the steering wheel in a chaotic way. Doctors had to conduct brain surgery to remove lymphoma, which resolved the symptoms. And a more terrifying case saw a 50-year-old woman who developed AHS after a brain hematoma was surgically removed. 18 months after the surgery, she suddenly had a strange feeling. I could not recognize the left arm as my own. I felt it belonged to someone else and wanted to hurt me because it moved towards me. I saw it quite big and distorted like a monster. I was terrified. As the doctors were examining her, she had another episode. Her left arm lifted up, approaching her face. She pleaded, Look, it's coming! Please help me! Please stop this monster! What is going on? 
To stop the arm, the medical team applied diazepam through the patient's IV and ended up prescribing anti-seizure medication to treat her symptoms. And in our first case with Karen Byrne, doctors brought her symptoms under control by prescribing her medication after she had suffered with her alien hand for 18 long years. At the end of the day, alien hand syndrome is a neurological phenomenon that truly highlights the enigmatic human brain. Even the smallest disruption in our intricate neural network can lead to bewildering consequences, transforming a limb into an unruly, seemingly independent entity. The more we delve into the realm of neurology, the more we can let it inspire us to keep pushing the boundaries of discovery. The excitement is almost impossible to control. Based on our previous video, we put a poll on Twitter asking, you're at a baseball game and the ball is coming towards you. Do you try to catch it? Most of you said you'd dive for it, but would you die for it? One user said, I watched your video, man. No way. Thanks a lot for watching, man. And as you now know, it's not when you can see it coming that you should be worried, but when you can't. Click the video on your screen to watch how a fun day out on a ball game resulted in a deadly strikeout.